all right we're talking about MCAT stuff hey guys and welcome back to my channel so today we are going to talk about the MCAT and how I got in the 95th percentile which is a 517 so we're gonna sit here I'm gonna be real with you guys tell you the honest truth about how I got through it how I suffered through the months of studying I can't be one of those people that's like I only studied for like a month or two weeks I'm not that. I'm just telling you guys exactly what I did. It was rough, but yeah, if you guys want my tips just to see what I did, then keep watching. So yeah, honestly, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I think the MCAT was like the worst part of my entire application process. Like all the classes I took, all the like parts of the application, like the interviews, those weren't that bad, but the MCAT was so bad for me. So I studied from November till May. So I started in early November and then I took the test on May 31st. And so I went through seven months of studying. Obviously when I was in winter break and spring break, I had a lot more time to study. I was doing a post back at the time. So I wasn't taking like a full course load. I didn't have like tons of extracurriculars. But yeah, it was a long time that I was actually like sitting there and going through the process of studying for this exam. Now, a lot of people talk about there being two phases. And so yeah, I kind of did that. I did like a content phase, which was November to February. And then from March till May, it was more like practice test focused. I really only did practice tests in April and May, but March was a little bit more of like practice questions. So you need to take the time to actually review the content and the material on the exam and then the next part is actually doing as many passages as you can and practice tests to get a feel for the actual exam. So let's just get into it you guys. So I took a course. Now I'm going to be real with you guys. I told you I'm going to tell you what I actually did. And I'm gonna be honest, and I did take a course, and I know that's not an option for everybody. I know that not everyone can afford a course. And so if you're one of those people watching that, that you're like, I can't speak. You're like, there's no way that I could afford a course. Don't worry about it. Like, you'll be fine. You can do well without taking a course, but I did find that it was helpful for me. I think a lot of people question whether or not they should take a course, and they're debating whether it's worth the money. And I think that, you have to weigh the pros and cons and it really depends on one the course that you're considering taking how good of a course it is how good the teacher is and two the type of person you are so i'm the type of person that i was very motivated but i do well with very clear instruction and then another thing that i considered was that i didn't have a great foundation for some of the content so the gen chem and the physics and the bio i was a little bit rougher on since i was doing a post -bac program and those classes I hadn't really taken in a while and my bio class was just like not that good. So I needed to make sure that I had a better foundation for that. And then I also just wanted to have someone that could give me feedback, that could guide me, could answer questions and can also teach me how to actually take the test because it's a little bit confusing. Now, I think this might depend on who you are. You might be really good at developing a study plan for yourself. You might have no issue with the content. I think especially if you've just reviewed the content and you've taken those courses much recently and you just have a really good foundation, then you'll be totally fine. I think for me, it was a lot more difficult. You know, I never took biochem. My bio class wasn't that good. I never took psych. And I really didn't remember gen chem and physics that well. So it was definitely a challenge for me to regain that hold on the material. Again, like, don't worry if you can't afford it, you'll be fine. I just think that a lot of people question whether they should do it. And I think on one hand, you know, they are really expensive. And then you have to weigh those factors. You know, how good is the course? How good is the teacher? I was lucky that I took a local course. I didn't take Kaplan or anything like that, but I just had a good teacher and I had, a good company that I was working with, but it might depend on those factors and then it will also depend on you and how you work best. But now I wanna get into my tips and I wanna talk about how I actually studied when it came down to it. So the first tip that I would give and that I think was really helpful was I always made a study plan and I would make it the night before. So that way when the next day came around and I was like, oh no, I wanna do this thing or like, you know, someone's invited me to do this. I already had my study plan. I knew how many hours I had to do for that day. 
and I just made sure that I had to do it. I kept my entire study schedule on a Google Sheet and it was like very intense, obviously. I think towards the end when I was more doing like practice tests and problems, I didn't focus on this as much, but it was super helpful when I was reviewing content and I was just trying to get through the material. So I use the Kaplan books mostly, and then for bio, I use the Exam Crackers Bio 1 and Bio 2. I'll try to find them and link them down below. It might be like the last year's version and I don't really know what they've come out with but that was what I used. So now I wanna talk about the way that I studied. So for chem and physics, we mostly learned that through the class, but I will say if you're somebody that has a strong background with that material and you're good with those courses, you honestly, I don't think really need to worry about it that much. For me, I had a really strong orgo background. I was taking orgo at the same time that I was studying for the MCAT and my orgo class was really good. So it was just like, something that I didn't really have to study for, but I did have to review a lot of Gen Chem and the questions, like I said, like they're not that complicated. It's more about reading the passages and understanding the passages, but the course really helped me review that. I would say though, if you don't have a course, just focus on learning through the books for that type of material. So let's talk about bio, cause that was like the worst part for me. So like I said, I didn't really have a good bio background. However, the way that I studied is I went through the bio one and bio two books and I would just kind of read them and take notes. And then after I did that with the whole book, I would go back and make flashcards for a lot of the material. And then when I came down to actually doing practice passages more in like March, April, May, I found it so important to do as many of these as possible as I don't know, like that section, the bio section of the MCAT, it's like the third section was just so tough for me. I think it was the one, I think I still ended up doing the worst on it, but it was the one that when I started doing practice passages, I was just not doing a good job. But after time, I really did well on it and I didn't take biochem, you guys. Like, okay, that's another tip. I would say that if you have the chance to take biochem and maybe you're watching this and you have a few years before you actually have to take the MCAT and you're still in college, take biochem before you actually take the test. Like. Yeah, you could do what I did and just learn it all from scratch, but it is going to be so much harder and I think it will help you so much. Obviously, you can still do well without biochem like I did, but it could save you so many hours of studying. So then for psych, I had never taken a psych class and basically what I did for that is kind of the same thing that I did for bio. I went through the Kaplan psych book and I just took notes on it and then I would make flashcards for terms I didn't know. Now, the thing with psych is even when you learn everything in the book, like I did, you can go back and you can realize that the terms that they test on the practice test can be different. So there are some terms you will like always see and they come up so often, but then they will always throw in a few random terms you've never heard of on the actual exam. And it's so infuriating, <laughs> but what I did is after every practice passage or every time I came along a term that I didn't know, I put it in a list of all these different terms and I just studied those. And that was really helpful for me as well in trying to learn as many terms as possible. Now you guys, let's talk about cars, which is the verbal section of the MCAT. And I think the one that so many people struggle with because it's not content based, it's just based on practice passages or that's how you study for it. It's just based on passages and it is just entirely reading comprehension. However, let me tell you guys, okay? I thought I was good to go with cars. I was like, there is no way I'm gonna have an issue with this. I struggled with this section. I wouldn't say, yeah, I struggled with the bio section most. This section, I actually did relatively well on. Like, I was surprised. Um, however, it was quite difficult to actually improve my score with cars. Now, the reason why I'm telling you this is not to freak you out. You can definitely improve your scores. I started off not doing that great and I ended up actually doing really, really well in the practice test. And then I think on the real thing, I ended up getting like a 90%, but on my practice test, I was getting like a 98%. So sometimes it just depends on the test. The reason why I am telling you this is just to start doing CARS practice passages as early as possible, because it does take a lot of time to improve. And even if you're a really good reader, the way that the MCAT phrases things are really difficult. And I think that's just like something I wanna repeat and make a whole point in its own. It's just that, 
the MCAT phrases things in a very particular way. So I would just focus on doing as many practice passages as possible when you get to that point. And that will help you so much since that's just the way that the test is written. You know, it's not just based on content. It's also understanding what's actually in the passage and making sure you can pull out the right stuff. <sighs> I had to get up and like shake my foot. It's like falling asleep because I'm just like sitting here and like all the stress of the MCAT is giving me like PTSD. Then when I actually got to doing practice tests. So in April, I started with the next step practice test. Now next step has you know, MCAT practice tests, they're not exactly like the real thing, but I would say they're really helpful and they're especially helpful for getting you used to the length and the endurance that you'll need to actually take the test. And they'll definitely help you with the content and they will definitely help you. Like I'm not saying they won't, but I will say that they are a little bit easier. At least for me, I found the next step practice test to be easier. I did a lot better on them than I did on my first like actual test that I took for the double AMC. So yeah, don't get discouraged, but I would say that they're super, super helpful and I would highly recommend doing those first. So I would do like three of those and you do have to buy them for like a hundred bucks, but I think the double AMC, the whole bundle is like two something. It's like probably like 230 or something like that. So, you know, you are spending money either way. <laughs> and then I don't even know how much it costs to register for that test, but that's like a whole nother thing. But Anyway, you do have to pay for it, but yeah. So the next step is really awesome for that. And then in May, you can move on to the double AMC practice tests, which are like the real thing and they will feel like the real thing. And those will be so helpful for making sure that you actually do well on test day. Like I said, the next step is easier than the double AMC. So if you do your first double AMC one and your score is pretty low and not what you wanted it to be, like mine was and I was like less than a month away from my test don't panic I ended up I think my first practice test I got a 506 and then I took the sample test I believe and then the next week oh no I didn't no I did 506 then it was 511 then I took the sample test and I found a way to like score it online you can find something on reddit and I think that I got a 515 and then I got a 518 on my third practice test. So don't panic, like your scores will go up the more that you do the practice test. That's why I think it's really important to do them. But they're also gonna help with stress because that's something you definitely need to make sure that you are controlling before the test day. You do not wanna be like super panicky on test day and you go in and you're freaking out because that could end up hurting you so much and that would be like the worst thing like you study so much and then you don't do well because you're stressed so definitely make sure that you do practice that you're controlling and managing your stress and that by the time you go in you at least feel like you prepared as much as you could have i'm not gonna lie to you guys i mean this is gonna be a time when you are gonna have to sacrifice your social life a little bit i'm not saying like you can't do anything for fun and you should just be studying for the mcat all the time but you are gonna have to study a lot and just put in those hours and i know that it's difficult but it will definitely get easier as long as you just make sure to focus as much as possible and just use this time constructively. You just need to make sure that you buckle down and study for it. And one thing that I do wanna mention actually is that you don't necessarily need to study as much as I did for like seven months. Like I said, I was kind of shaky on the content, but if you feel that you are stronger on content and maybe you don't have to study as much for that, then I wouldn't say you really need seven months. Like I would let yourself have at least like five months though, I mean, Again, I know there are people that study and they say they study for like a month. I just like don't think that's realistic for everybody. Now, I have friends that have even done that. And if you can study for a month, then like good for you. You know, I had a friend that studied for 25 days and she still did really well. So I'm not saying that can't happen, but I would say give yourself enough time to study for it because it can be tricky and you might struggle with it. But no matter where you're starting from, I really believe that you can do really well in the test. And you know, you come from a place like where I was, where I didn't know any of the content. I mean, I knew some of it obviously, but I was rough with the content and I still managed to do really well in the test. So it's just about putting in the hard work, 
putting in the time and the effort and you can do really well. So yeah, I feel like that's pretty much what I have to say on the MCAT. Let me know if you guys have any questions. And once again, please make sure to subscribe, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. It is just one way that you can help me out so much. And I hope you guys have a great day and I will talk to you later. Bye guys.